The next name storm in the 2025 hurricane season could already be on the board. We'll break that down, but I'm more concerned about an area that hasn't even developed yet. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegg is back with you. If you like fall, I also have more good news. A secondary round coming to the eastern two-thirds of the country. We'll talk about that a little bit later on in the video. Here we go. Here is the Hurricane Center outlook. We have code orange here with this wave rolling off of the African continent as we speak. Some gradual development expected over the next couple of days. Again, we're not talking about explosive development by any means. And that should allow this wave to get pretty far west to the Caribbean. Now, if it goes further west, that means it's going to be on the weaker side. So with the steering currents in place as we speak, and we'll take a look at this, if it gets strong fast, it's going to go up and out and stay and follow the upper level flow. If it stays on the weaker side, it's going to be guided by the trade winds further to the west, but it will likely stay weak and discombobulated but with all likelihood we are looking at at least our next tropical depression by the middle to latter stages of the upcoming work week here now here's the steering current and it's this little circle that we are dealing with right in here that's it this is the wave nothing to write home about as of wednesday the third now we're going to take this further along and you're seeing you're going to see here this is the european rendition there's not much going on here going forward. By Sunday, September 7th, we have our little wave rolling into the western central part of the Atlantic and then getting pushed along, pushed along, pushed along, and then here it is. You can hardly make it out here on the European solution over the next 10-ish days because it does stay weak. That does allow it to get a little further to the west. Now, with that said, I want to show you some of the ensembles because it came off low. We always like to watch these when they come off low. These are the European ensembles, and each one of these different lines or L's represent a different idea that the European ensemble suite comes together by putting in different initial conditions because we don't have a lot of data with this just yet. But there we go. A lot of this has it riding to the north of the Caribbean. There are a few members on the southern end that get close to the northeast Caribbean, so we are going to watch that closely, obviously. Uh, I mentioned earlier in the video that I'm more concerned about an area that's not even on the map yet. You can already kind of see it. There is some ensemble support here for the Western Caribbean. Whenever I like to get things in the Western Caribbean, especially with the setup that we are in, and for that, I want to go back to the other weather computer for a minute, and then we'll get back into the ensembles. This is the pattern. So you see these dark lines here kind of working their way down and the white arrows. That's the wind flow, the upper-level steering flow, the upper-level wind flow. We like it when the storms are coming at us from Africa and ride north of the Caribbean because it's going to help to open up an escape route like it did with Aaron, what, a couple weeks ago now, and helps it guide it out to sea in between Bermuda and the United States. We don't like to have the trough slicing into the deep south and northern Gulf when we have the storms trying to develop in the extreme western Caribbean those troughs then yank the storm up north and then guide it to the east. So we, it's a double-edged sword. We like the trough when they're coming out of Africa north of the Caribbean, but we don't like it again whenever they're in the Caribbean. So there, that said, uh, that's what we're going to be watching for, maybe some shenanigans. And this, by the way, is not going to be until we get in towards the 10th, 11th, 12th of September, maybe some of that. I think the bigger signal, though, for the Western Caribbean Gulf area is going to come later in September and then through October. As we talked about prior to the season, I think that whole big backloaded thing where we jam the hurricane season into maybe a four to six week window like we did last year is likely going to come into fruition again in our relatively mild season, to say the least, to date, is going to go away. La Nina coming back into play. MJO passage going to be all there as well. So a couple of things. This is the new Google AI model, by the way, and you see most of the members have it getting toward the Caribbean and then curving. 
a few do have it kind of riding into the greater Antilles, and if that were to happen, it would also stay weak. We'd be watching for some flooding concerns if it stays west, of course, with the mountainous terrain in Hispaniola, in Cuba, again, Dominican Republic, Haiti, also showing another wave sliding off of Africa. Uh, the, uh, the Google DeepMind AI model, not bullish on anything in the Caribbean at this point, but that's a secondary wave rolling off of Africa. Tis the season for that to happen, obviously, as we have now rolled right into September. There's the GFS. The GFS wants to get the storm strong fast, and that's why most of its members quickly get it out of here. It's probably wrong on that front, so you're likely going to see the GFS come back to the West. And you are likely going to hear people, ah, GFS is shifting to the West. It's okay. It's just correcting. Again, remember, if it's shifting to the West... A lot of channels aren't going to tell you that that means that the storm is going to be weaker. Okay, so just keep that in mind. If it goes further west, it's going to be weaker. And most indications that I am seeing with that trough there is that this is likely not going to be a player in the U.S. forecast other than some surf if it were to get strong in the same area as Aaron did a couple of weeks ago. Okay, if you're still with me, hit that thumbs up button. I would love to know your thoughts on the next, really, the second half of the season and I think that's going to kickstart really by mid-September. So that four to six week period of mid-September through about mid to late October, that's when I think we cram in most of the hurricane season. Post in the comments, I would love to know your thoughts. Okay, so back over to the other weather computer. If you love fall, it has been a great start. This is now a new cold front, a fresh cold front coming through. You see the temperature anomalies in blue and purple. So relative to normal, this one even has more of a bite than the last one that we just had rolling through the upper Midwest and Northern Plains. So I have a lot of good news. Again, if you're a fan of the pumpkin spice and all that stuff, uh, apple picking going on in the upper Midwest, look at all the chill coming down all the way into Texas. This is then going to spread east as we get into the September 7th, 8th, 9th time frame. So that first week of September, again, it's going to be feeling like fall. It kind of washes out a little bit, but a welcome break from the heat to those that didn't get a ton of relief from the first one. So here we go. We're going to fast forward now Friday, September 5th. Look at that. International Falls 55 this is Friday, September 5th now. We're fast-forwarding. We'll come back to tomorrow in just one second. Detroit, we're at 67 for afternoon high temperature on Friday. It is going to be feeling fantastic. Pittsburgh, we're at 75. Boston, we're right around 80. Detroit, we're at 70 degrees on the 6th, on, uh, coming up on the first full weekend of September. Gorgeous in Chicago, Omaha, we're at 67. Still hot in the deep south. That front really not going to make it to Florida. And then again, gorgeous fall-like weekend in the Great Lakes, Upper Midwest. Detroit, we're at 68. Chicago, 67. International Falls, we're at 57. Marquette, 55. If you like fall, uh, the first week of September is going to be a great taste for you of the upcoming season. All right, severe risk for tomorrow. This is as that front starts to make its presence known. Uh, Low-end severe weather risk from uh, about the Twin Cities into western Minnesota, closer to Alexandria, and then back into the eastern part of North and South Dakota. Just a low-end risk there. High temperatures tomorrow, back to the 70s in Minneapolis. Again, this is pre-cold front. Now, those temperatures I just showed you. Still, we're talking about big-time heat in the west. Typically, you see that when one side of the country is chilly, the other side is blazing relative to normal. Vegas, we're at 100. Boise, we're at 100. Phoenix, we are at 106. So uh, still a hot go of things. It's still hot in Texas as well. Here's the deal. This is Tuesday, 7 o'clock, scattered thunderstorms rolling through the upper Midwest. We still have this pesky disturbance off the Florida coast, too. It's not tropical in nature, but it is uh, made it for a soggy Labor Day along the coast in Florida. Uh, that's going to continue to meander there and just send back showers and thunderstorms. Here is where that severe weather threat gets going. This is two uh, 3 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Central into the upper Midwest, and you see those thunderstorms rolling through, kind of a mini complex gets going from eastern South Dakota through western Minnesota. That's going to be 9 o'clock on Tuesday to round out your day. Kind of rapid fire the last part, but I hope you found this informative. If you did and you made it this far, 
Again, I'd like to know your thoughts on this whole back half portion of the hurricane season. Good to be back with you guys. Um, if you made it this far, consider subscribing. Again, we take some of the nonsense out of the weather that is rolled social media uh, and YouTube especially. So if you want to join the team and help to sniff out some of that garbage and call all of that out, love to have you on board. If you like to just talk about the weather, that's what I like to do. That's why we're here. Hit that subscribe button, and we'll catch you next time.